The Johnny Carson Show. Starring Johnny Carson. Thank you very much and welcome to the show tonight. I want to announce this. This happens to be National Egg Week. And for the people in our audience tonight, a fresh egg was placed on each seat in the studio. Did you get to us? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I want to thank, first of all, the people who've been writing in. And this is mainly uh, ladies in the middle age bracket because, uh, I don't know, they, they kind of think that I'm undernourished. They look at me and they think I'm a little thin on television. And they've been sending me things and, you know, to fill out the weight. And one lady paid a repairman, a TV repairman in St. Louis, $15 take a long, narrow streak out of her television tube. <laughs> it turned out to be me. It's one of those unfortunate things. Now, I have tried everything to gain weight, you know, because it's always nice to, to keep uh, healthy. So I, I sent for one of these uh, Get Strong by Mail. You've seen the ads on the magazines for the fellow standing with the muscles. So I sent for the barbells, you know, and they delivered them through the mail. And I sent for the 50-pound set, and I worked with them for a week, and then the mailman brought the 100-pound set, and I worked. And then the third week, he brought the 200-pound set. And it didn't do me any good at all. But we have the strongest mailman in town. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I tried a lot of things. Of course, being thin has its advantages, too, because it, uh, it saved my parents a lot of money. You see, they, uh, when I was growing up, well, they, they didn't have to buy a bed. Until I was 12 years old, I slept in a golf bag. <laughs> And the people have been making suggestions, and I will try everything but cod liver oil. Somebody suggested cod liver oil to gain weight. And I just don't like the idea. I mean, I just can't imagine anybody sneaking up on an innocent little cod and draining his oil. <laughs> <laughs> it's un-American. <coughs> now, another problem, uh, you know, school starts this month. The kids go back to school, and they're not too happy about it. Mothers are kind of happy. Uh, the teachers aren't very happy either because they have to give up those good paying summer jobs to come back and teach. <laughs> but the problem that a lot of parents have, I have it at home, is that now that school is here, the kids are staying up a little late, you know, watching television. Now, there are probably a lot of them watching our show now, and the, and the folks would like to get them to bed. So tonight, as a public service, we thought we would try to get the kids to bed early. Now, let's face it. They're not going to pay any attention to you, and they're not going to pay any attention to me. They only listen to heroes nowadays, you know. So tonight, we have a hero for you. And he's the star of that new CBS show that's coming up soon, Gunsmoke. And here he is, Mr. Jim Arness. Jim? <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> Jim, uh, you know, I know you're a hero. But you see, the problem is that we have to convince the kids watching tonight that you're a hero. Well, fine, Johnny. I'd like to help you out, but uh, what do you want me to do? Well, suppose uh, you show the kids how fast you are on the draw. All right, but uh, how are we going to do that? Well, you see, Jim, I've seen an advanced preview of your show, Gunsmoke, that's coming up, and, you know, there's only one man who stands a chance with you. Who's that? That's you, you see. <laughs> so tonight what we've done, Jim, we've brought a mirror, a large mirror on stage here, and I thought maybe you could show the kids and try to see if you can outdraw yourself. <laughs> you like to try? Well, all right. All right, kids at home? Watch very closely. Here's Jim Arness now, the star of Gunsmoke, and he's going to try to outdraw himself. You ready? You bet. Good luck, Jim. how fast you are on the draw. Would you tell the kids to go to bed? <laughs> All right, Johnny. Kids, uh, this is Marshal Matt Dillon of Gunsmoke talking to you. Now, get to bed early and get some rest because you don't want to miss my new CBS television show. And, uh, Good night. Now that we got the kids in bed, it's safe to tell the adults. The show starts this Saturday night on CBS at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, right? That's, That's right, That's Gunsmoke. Johnny. So thank you very much, Good Marshal. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Boy, there is a real hero. You see him drunk? Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. 
What, 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 what's wrong, Sonny? I'm scared. I heard some gunshots and they woke me up. <laughs> weekend watching television and you know what struck me about television was the tremendous improvement they have in television commercials the, the commercials are getting better all the time uh, as a matter of fact you probably noticed that the all the crazy cartoons have taken over and they you know selling the product nowadays and uh, people are fascinated by these uh, these little cartoons as a matter of fact uh, it's changing the habits of shoppers so I would like to show you what happened if you want to come with me I'm going down to my neighborhood grocery store <laughs> I'm having wonderful luck tonight, aren't I? For you folks at home, I just got beamed by the curtain this time around. I mentioned a while ago that the, the new policy of the armed forces, you know, is a pretty good one. Uh, the Army now insists, or the Air Force, or all the services, encourage the husband, or I mean the wife, the wives, and the children of her soldier husband to live on the base wherever the soldier husband is stationed. Now, this is a wonderful policy, but if it's successful, Here's the way that fighting at the front may soon be. The war is just entering a crucial stage. Right at this moment, somewhere at the front, an important plan is about to be put into operation. We switch you now to the Quonset hut of Colonel John J. Carson, one of the country's leading war aces. General, what do you think of the plan? The daring operation, Colonel. This plan goes through, it might be a turning point in the war. Colonel Carson, will you kindly brief the squadron leaders? Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, when that alert sounds, I'll want every available plane off the ground in five seconds. Now, Squadron A will move in, skip bomb the target here at 200 feet. Good. Squadron B will knock out the power station here. Squadron C will cover the attack. Very good. I personally, General, will lead the first wave. Oh, I never saw the PX so crowded. Why are having a sale on shower curtains? Uh, dear, you've got the bundles on the maps. Well, why do you always have to use my kitchen for your darn war? <laughs> the general's hut. Look, the, the general's kids have the measles. Oh, what a shame. I am sorry to hear that, General. Thank you, Mrs. Carson. Now, dear, would you leave us alone? We're planning an attack. An attack? Oh, don't tell me you're planning to, to fight over the weekend. <laughs> well, why? Well, the girls and I planned a picnic for the weekend. <laughs> now, what'll I do with all that potato salad? Well, don't worry. We'll drop it on the enemy. <laughs> now, look, you leave us alone. You don't understand. This is war. <laughs> now, gentlemen, let me go over the territory with you once more. Now, as I said, there's a heavy concentration of ack ack in this area right here. Now, it's imperative that we knock out these dams. <gasps> Johnny! Don't use that kind of language in front of the baby. As, uh, as I was saying, it's imperative that we knock out these darns. <laughs> now, let me freeze again what I told you, gentlemen. Yeah. Squadron A will lead... Daddy! Squadron A will... Daddy! Squad... Well, what is it, Junior? Can I have a dime? <laughs> now, kids, are you? Yes, of course. There you are. Now... <laughs> As I was saying, there's a, uh, there's a very heavy concentration of ack ack in this area right here. Colonel, uh, <laughs> do you think we should fly at a different altitude to avoid their radar screens? Well, it's a gamble. I always believe that the shortest route is the best, General. Good, then we'll proceed as planned. Fine. Right. Now, there's one point we must avoid at all costs. That's this mountain range right here. You see, if we come over this mountain... mountain come on! I think our mission is clear, gentlemen. Bomb everything under the lollipop. <laughs> gentlemen, let's synchronize our watches. Exactly 2,200. Carson, where did you get that Mickey Mouse watch? <laughs> oh, it's that kid of mine. He keeps taking the watch all the time. All right, men, now do you understand when that alert sounds in the air in five seconds? Understand? Right. 
Tonight's a night costume. Good luck, my boy. Thanks, sir. Johnny, don't forget, I'm going to the movies tonight. Oh, I, uh, I almost forgot, General. I, I won't be able to make the raid tonight. <laughs> raid? Why not? We haven't got a babysitter. <laughs> Carson, this is war. I'll sit with a baby. <laughs> oh, gee, I gotta relax. Take a little nap here. That alert sounds five seconds in the air. <laughs> Zoom! <sighs> Try and keep the baby quiet. <laughs> Hello. Baker one to Baker two. Hello, Shirley. Oh, this is Harriet. Have you heard? The picnic is off. The boys are working again this weekend. <laughs> Uh, gotta relax. Five seconds, the alert sounds in the air. <laughs> oh, yes. I have a terrific recipe for upside down spam cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, silly. I can't tell you over the phone. Well, the enemy might be listening. <laughs> well, all right. I'll talk to you later. We'll go on out. <sighs> oh, Johnny. I met Peggy at the PX this afternoon. Mm. And what do you think she told me? I don't know, dear. Do you know our neighbors next door, the Jones, just got a brand new 1956 Sabre jet, pink and black with white leather cockpit? Nice. Oh, it sounds just darling. Mm. Well, why can't you get a new one? After all, you're a colonel and Jones is only a lieutenant. Look, they had to give him a new plane. He was shot down. <laughs> Some people have all the luck. <laughs> Now look, honey, you don't understand. That alert sounds five seconds in the air. Zoom! Oh. And another thing, why can't we have a garbage disposal? I'm tired of throwing it into the propellers. Yep. <laughs> now look, I gotta relax. Five seconds, zoom! Oh. Sweetie, don't cry. Hold the oh, baby. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh, I think I'll see how the war's going on television. <laughs> oh, gee whiz, look at that. About 500 tanks. Huh. There must be 100 battleships. Oh, there go the big guns now. This isn't the war, this is the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> yeah, I wondered why that admiral was tap dancing so well. <laughs> now look, honey, your daddy's got to relax. He's going to get on a very dangerous mission. The alert sounds five seconds in the air. Zoom! you want for the trip? Peanut butter and jelly or chopped liver and jelly? Look, would you and Allison nag before a mission like this? <laughs> well, there's the alert. I gotta go. Five seconds in the air. Where's my helmet? I gotta have my helmet. Gotta have the helmet. Who put the goldfish in my helmet? <laughs> enjoyed the show tonight, and we do want to welcome a couple of stations. WKRG-TV has joined the network in Mobile, Alabama. And uh, by the way, last week we didn't have time, but I wanted to welcome 
or congratulate station KMTV in Omaha, Nebraska on their sixth anniversary. Good luck on your seventh year. Now, for our last sketch that we just did in the Army, I want, there are a lot of people i got to thank. I want to thank the United States Army for their splendid cooperation. It just wouldn't have been possible. The Quartermaster Corps for supplying all the equipment, uh, the Marine Corps, the Air Arm of the Navy, uh, Eddie Rickenbacker, Charles Lindbergh, <laughs> Mr. Doolittle, <laughs> the Army Photography School at Fort Benning, and also Dick Powell for letting us new, use the name June Allison. <laughs> and a uh, very special thanks to my sponsor, Jim. <laughs> The Johnny Carson Show has been brought to you by That's Jell-O, America's favorite gelatin dessert. Tiger Fafara and Bobby Iyer. This is John Condon speaking. Tune in next week when the Johnny Carson Show will be brought to you by Jell-O, America's favorite gelatin dessert.